in your mind, when does a football season truly begin? Huh. Well, really, in, in our minds, a lot of times, it's right after when the SEC media days hits. In my opinion, when people start really across the country start talking about football, the season's here. It's 8.06 on a Tuesday morning, a bright and sunny day from Radio Row, Hoover, Alabama. We are live from SEC Media Days Day 2. Kevin Sumlin and the players, of course, will take center stage at 1 o'clock today. They'll be paired with Tennessee, but believe me, the eyes of the media, 1,300-plus credentialed, will be looking at Kevin Sumlin. Straight across. Got the whole crew. You have to really have a feel for what a guy can handle, and you really don't have that feel uh, until you get in an environment. This is Texas A&M head coach Kevin Sumlin, and you're listening to the SEC Radio Network. Perfect. One take. One take, Charlie. Just like that. Good. Um. Football season <laughs> starts then. But uh, certainly now, when that, you, you put that schedule up and you see it every day and we get closer and closer, uh, obviously the real season starts here real quickly. The Texas A&M Aggies have less than a month before the first game on the schedule. Everyone is hoping for something in August camp. Hail to the now. Let's go. More power, more pop. That drives me crazy. Read the damn card. Good job, Danny. Good job, Danny. The most important thing for us is trying to develop a true two deep. We still got to put the right pieces in the right places, but uh, I think without a doubt we'll have a two deep this year for the first time since I've been here. Always the big thing for us is just Plan that foundation for the knowledge of what we're doing offensively. Go Sabo, go Sabo, go Sabo. Go, go Sabo, go, go, go. Making sure that the new guys are brought up to speed and that we can evaluate them properly to be able to know whether they're ready to help us or they need some extra time. The crunch time, if you want to call it that, uh, is upon us. Internally, the clock is ticking, while outside expectations aren't exactly lofty. It's going to be tough. I mean, he was everything to the offense. Now, obviously, it's not just losing Johnny, though. You lost a real go-to guy with Mike Evans. What I'd be concerned about if I was an Aggie fan is what are we going to do about the defense because the defense was not very good last year. But to be honest with you, people think that we've probably got the worst group in the SEC, and, and I know it, it, it doesn't sit well with me. I don't think it sits well with the guys in our room, uh, but until we go out and change that perception, that's who we are. My expectations are always the same. I, I, I tell guys all the time, we're trying to be the best defense in the league. And to do that, you have to have the best players up front. And to do that, you have to have great competition in each position. So we're, we're always striving to be the best, regardless what the outside world thinks or, or, or talks about or who's here, who's not there. I mean, those are things we can't control. There's all kinds of people talking, you know, and, and uh, whether it's uh, national media, local media, whatever that is, you know. We've, we've done some things, but we haven't done everything we wanted to do. And, and so from an expectation standpoint outside, it might be able to you know, generate a little bit of fire, but uh, we've got expectations in this program that uh, we hold people accountable to, and, and I think our guys understand that. The Pulse, Texas A&M football is presented by AT&T, building you a better network. The term off season is misleading, especially during the summer. And there is nothing off about time spent with director of football performance, Larry Jackson. That's it, here we go. Let's crank. Set. Dig, 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 dig. That's it. That's the way to work. I often make jokes with them that, you know, you're going to hate me from January to August, but you're going to love me from September back, back through January. And, uh, you know, if they all like me too much, then that means that I'm too easy on them. Get your hip game right. If this don't do it, nothing going to get you right. All right. That's it. There you go, Mal. Just getting on it, baby. 
you know, he makes sure he makes sure we're in shape and everything we do workout wise, he explains that this is gonna help you for football. You know, we can see that. When we go out there, we work and he expects us to work as hard as anybody in the country. That's what he expects. So, I mean, if you go out there and you, you lag around, he's gonna call you out. Whenever they're excited to start practicing and, and you know, and, and kind of get back under that deal, it, may, it lets me know that, you know, they don't want to continue to do my workouts. They'd rather be out here practicing and banging heads than going through these workouts. Grueling, punishing, exhausting. That's only the beginning of the descriptions of Jackson's workouts. Toward the end, you're not sure if you'll make it. Hence his player given nickname. Tell us that nickname and what are your thoughts on them referring to you as that? Uh, well, it's Black Death. That's the name, that, that's, that's how it was given to me. I guess I'm a big black guy and I bring death uh, to their bodies. I guess that's what they feel. You know, it, it's intimidating for some people, but man, Coach Jackson, is, he's such a character, man. He's so cool. Um, he's just one of those guys where, you know, he doesn't have to say anything for you to do right. You just know. You know, you, you just have that mutual respect between each other. You know, he's he's not going to yell. He's not going to scream. You just know, man, I you know, I got to do right for Coach Jackson. We're not creating wrestlers or we're not creating power lifters. We're creating great football players. Some of the guys might have strength, strengths and weaknesses that the other guy doesn't have. So you kind of make a, uh, you break a program down to a position and then you break that program down more to an actual person so that, you know, you can kind of, balance each guy out so that they're best at that position and that's it. Playmakers on three, playmakers on three. One, two, three, playmakers. This segment of The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by Bud Light, the perfect beer when you're up for whatever. Competition is at the core of the Aggie program. Relishing it is nearly a requirement. Relenting against it means you'll likely concede playing time. You got to be bent. Be underneath the shoulder pad. Stay bent. Helmet under the chin. Working all the fundamentals right now. Right now. Hey, so get to the ball. Get to the ball. There's not a great football team without competition. It makes all the difference in the world. The one thing I believe in is the best is going to play. I don't have any problem changing that depth chart you know, daily we need to to keep guys motivated and pushing themselves hard to practice. Some of you guys get, go ones and twos, some of you guys go twos and ones and so forth. So be ready for that. Same thing in half line. We'll make a few changes there. Let some younger guys get some work against the first team O-line, okay? See the ammo, check your oil and see what you're made of. Think you guys ready for the challenge, right? Sir. All right, here we go. Let's get ready for fast start. Let's start fast. Here we go. Break it down. I think we've got some young guys that have come in here and competed and have pushed some of the older guys and, and uh, have earned their right to get on the field and that's going to make us a better team. Let's move around from stage to stage and game. Let's bust some heads. Hey, hard work on three. One, two, three. Hard work. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. No subs early. No subs early. No subs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Malcolm. Go, Malcolm. Go, Malcolm. That a baby. Yeah. It's a spot, man. It's like a job. And that competition, you know, it makes us play so much better because, you know, you see these young guys getting better and then you're an older guy, you're like, man, he can take my spot. Not everyone is competing against someone, but they are competing against something every day. I want to be the best left tackle in the nation. It starts now. If I want to be the best, I got to prepare to be the best. And that starts in the weight room, outside, in the film room. Teams across the country are doing the same thing. That gets us going, that gets us motivated every day. And it's so rewarding when, once you win the games and you see all of it getting put together. I mean, it's, it's great to just to go out there as a family and just win games. You know, competition brings the best out of anyone. And both of them, like, you could tell they competed against each other throughout the entire summer. And, and just they, they try to take that momentum and, and push through fall camp. And, and throughout the course of fall camp, the competition between both of them, they kept elevating their play. All right, here we go. Let's get it going. Let's get in the routine of this early. Going towards the end door. Ball on the 20-yard line. Get flat. 
Good. Hey, last one right here. Last one, Ace. Let's go. All right, good. Take it to the sideline now. Take it to the sideline. Let's get ready. All right, Mike. Let's have a good day, all right? Human nature, they both want that job. And, you know, they're both, you know, deep down, I think, that they, they try to distance themselves between each other so they can go out there and, and compete and try to win the job. But I thought they've handled it pretty good, both of them. They, uh, they celebrate when the other person does something good, and, and they laugh and joke with each other. And I think they even hang out together off the field. So, you know, it, I've been pretty fortunate with that scenario and that situation with these two guys. You guys got to dictate the tempo of this offense, all right? Got you. Hey, give me ace, give me ace, 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 ace. Like that? Yeah. <laughs> Go, Summer. That's a great drive right there. Great job, Trey. Good job. Nice job, baby. Good job. That rubs dirty, dog. I like it. Good job. Hey, great check right there. Hey, that's a hell of a job right there. Both of you guys, that's two really good drives. Hey. hey, good first drive, man. Hey, do you want a speed option or you want to throw it? All right, we got this. We got this. Walk in there. Walk in there. Walk in there. <laughs> Turn up loud on three. One, two, three. Turn up! I think I charted like 270 plays for each kid. And we went through everything, just the pluses and the minuses of the play to the completion percentage, you know, the situations that they were in. If it was two minute offense, if it was third downs, if it was goal line, you know, we, we put them in so many situations. All right. I thought this actually worked out pretty good. You see that, how they're playing two guys outside, you know, and they, they do a good job of mixing up your stack looks. You have all the, you have a few options. It's not too many, but I think you can, like in a situation like this with this leverage, double slant, you can sit there and hit Ricky, three up, and then just bang it in him right there in that window. All right, third and eight. This is a great throw. This is what you're going to ask for right here. This is a perfect, this is a perfect throw. You did your, your mental, games with Snyder on this one, which is smart. It's a big time run by Trey Carson. Yeah, that's a big time. You guys got any questions? All right, let's have a good day. I'll see you out there. 920 walkthrough. What battle? Oh, quarterback. quarterback. Yeah. quarterback That's uh, quarterback at the end of the <laughs> Decision made. It is Kenny Hill that will take the first snaps of the Texas A&M football season. The sophomore was named the starter Saturday, beating out true freshman Kyle Allen. Head coach Kevin Sumlin said Hill got the nod from he and offensive coordinator Jake Spavital because of, quote, body of work and a feel you have. This is college football at the highest level, and you know the best players are going to play. And right now, Kenny's playing, playing the best for us, and and we believe that he's going to put us in the best position to succeed. So we get, we got to ride with Kenny. But you know, I feel very comfortable if, if things don't go as planned that Kyle can step in and, and get the job done. You know, we've got uh, a lot of competition across the board. I know the depth chart was released. Um, Earlier this morning, you guys know me. That's an ongoing fluid situation. So you can ask all the questions you want about what looks on paper. I would wait to see who runs out there in Columbia.
you look at what uh, Coach Spurrier has done, you know, three straight 11 win years. Um, you go look back through that, he was close to those numbers, you know, eight, nine, 10 wins earlier with different quarterbacks. And so, you know, I think um, there's not any question based on his track record of not just the player, but the system being able to, to work and him being able to work these quarterbacks in those systems. And, and you know, offensively, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't look for them to drop off at all. Let's go, eat, eat. Doing all the stuff that you believe in. Aggieland, we see it's top season. I do it for the fam, that's the reason. I'm a rune, not my blood, I'm bleeding. I need to have uh, Sam Miller, Connor McQueen, and Justin Bass see Gary Reynolds right after this meeting because you are now officially on scholarship. Yeah.